group. Here's some information on the Desmos activity unit 2B for Math 115. This is the first screen. You can give some responses here. And then we cruise along to some true-false work. All birds can fly ends up being false. Penguins, for example, do not fly. When we provide an example to show that something is false, this is called providing a counterexample. And you'll be asked to label things as true or false. And if something is false, be sure you have a counterexample ready. The sum of two numbers is always greater than either of the numbers we start with is a false statement. I'm borrowing some uh, examples from classmates. If we use 5 plus 0 equals 5, like in this top line, that answer of 5 is not greater than either of the numbers. It's, it's not greater than 5. It's equal to 5. And so that doesn't quite get the job, or, or this counterexample shows that mm, it's not greater than both of them. If you switch to negative numbers, that might be a little bit more clear. If we added negative 1 and negative 2 together, we would get negative 3, and that sum is actually less than either of the numbers that we started with. So that's kind of an interesting counterexample there. This screen, screen 4, has a definition for a counterexample, so you can tell I think it's a big deal because I made all of that text for you, and then I asked you some more questions. Whenever we multiply two numbers together and get an answer of 0, one of the numbers does have to be 0 to start with. That one is true. This one down here, if I just replace the word 0 with 12, we get a false statement. If you multiply two numbers together and they have an answer of 12, then it is not the case that one of the numbers must have been 12 to start with. It could have been 4 times 3 to start with, or 2 times 6, or one of my favorites is 1 half times 24. There are lots of ways that we could have built 12 with multiplication without starting with a 12. So that one ended up being false. One more true-false situation. This involves square roots. And if you've forgotten what a square root is, uh, it's the number that when multiplied by itself gives us another number. So like the square root of 25 is 5. And we'll use square roots as part of our geometry work in the next unit. This one ends up being false. If we take the square root of a number, we do not always get a number that is less than what we started with. The square root of 1 is just equal to 1, so we end up with the same thing we started with. Same thing happens with 0. This bottom one might be a little bit more interesting. The square root of 1 fourth ends up being 1 half. 1 half is larger than the 1 fourth that we started with. So that's kind of interesting there. So this one was false. Two more. Every rectangle is a square, and every square is a rectangle. I said those in the opposite order of what they're typed on here. This top one, every square is a rectangle. That is true. Uh, rectangles are defined by having four right angles, by having two sets of parallel sides, and the pairs have equal lengths. And that will work for a square. Okay, So every square is a rectangle. But it's not true that every rectangle is a square. This one is false. So a 2 centimeter by 3 centimeter rectangle will not give us a square. But I gave a specific example, like a 4 inch by 4 inch square is also a rectangle since it will have four right angles. It'll have two sets of parallel sides. The two sides have um, equal lengths in each case. Every square happens to be a member of the rectangle family. Another kind of problem we need to tackle in this unit are these combo problems, is what I call them. Uh, these come usually in the form of weird zoos or strange kind of coin situations, sometimes geometry. With this one, we only have jackals and chickens. A jackal is kind of like a wild dog. At this zoo, we have 160 animal heads, which lets us know there are 160 animals. And then we have 424 animal feet. And that, those two pieces of information, will help us figure out how many animals of each type are available. There are a couple different ways to do this. I know I've already typed in the box, but I'm actually going to look at a guess and check table first. So I left you one here. We can make guesses about how many jackals and how many chickens we have. We know that those two columns together need to add up to 160. So I just guessed. Maybe we have 100 jackals and 60 chickens. And then I checked how many feet that would give us. 
four feet on a jackal and two feet on a chicken gave me 520 feet altogether. So 400 feet from the jackals, another 120 feet from the chicken for 500 chickens, plural, gave me 520 feet. And I don't want 520. I wanted 424. So that top line didn't work. So I try again. I know I have too many feet, so a good strategy is to cut down on the number of things that have a lot of feet. So I cut down on the number of jackals and I picked 80 jackals and 80 chickens. And I checked their feet. Four times 80 plus two times 80 gave me 480 feet. Oops. Oh, it won't let me go back. Do, 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 do. There, 480 feet. Still not what I want, but I'm closer. So then I tried 60 jackals and 100 chickens. That's 160 animals. And I checked the feet. Four feet each on the 60 jackals, two feet each on the chickens. We'll get 440 feet in that case. Keeps jumping at me. And I admit at this point, I got a little discouraged that I wasn't getting an answer as rapidly as I wanted to. <laughs> but if I guessed 52 and 108, 52 jackals and 108 chickens, this one does work out. Four times 52 will give me 208 feet from the jackals. Two times 108 will give me 216 feet from the chickens. And then when I add those together, that'll give me 424 feet. So I know that I have 52 jackals and 108 chickens by guessing and checking. And if you don't like guessing and checking because it doesn't feel very efficient to you, we can use some algebra to make this happen. And that's what's going on in this box. So here's some algebra ideas. We can say, like let the J represent the number of jackals and C represent the number of chickens. If we add those types of animals together, we better get 160. So J plus C is 160. When we talk about their feet, four on a jackal and two on a chicken, add all that together for 424 feet. This gives us two equations to work with. And if you've done this before, this is called solving a system of equations. We don't have to be that fancy, but that's what it's called. My recommendation is that you solve the top equation where it's very plain, j plus c is 160, just solve it for j. Get that j all by itself. When we do that, j equals 160 minus c. You'll take that expression and substitute it into the second equation where j is, and you'll use parentheses to make that happen. So when you do that, it will read four times parentheses 160 minus c, close those parentheses, plus another 2c is equal to 424. And then we do the regular algebra things like distribution. 4 times 160 is 640. 4 times a negative c is negative 4c. And then drag the other stuff along, plus 2c equals 424. You'll combine your like terms, and you'll solve for c. And when you do, you get c is 108 chickens. When we go back and find j with that little expression 160 minus whatever our chicken count was, 160 minus 108 is 52 jackals. And I think that's what we had from the guess and check table also. 52 jackals and 108 chickens. You can get it from your table or you can get it from algebra. And I think I left you a tutorial video where you can get it from a graph in Desmos if you can construct these two equations. So you might want to check that out as a third way of getting to an answer and also as a way of double checking your work. All right, that's a long one. 52 jackals, 108 chickens. From the previous screen, I'd like a statement. At the Weird Zoo, there are blank, more or less jackals, than chickens. There are 56 fewer jackals than chickens at the zoo. Let me just go double check. Jackals. If we did 52 plus 56, we'd be at 108. So I think the statement is correct. I need you to be able to 
answer in this kind of format because in Canvas quizzes, I won't be leaving you a multiple choice question that lists the number of chickens or the number of jackals because you could just back substitute and find it without doing any problem solving. So a statement like this one allows the problem solving to happen and then you have to formulate it into a new look. So that's why that's happening like that. We are switching from the weird zoo to the weird bank. At the weird bank, we only use nickels and dimes. We have a hundred coins and we have a value of $6.25. We'd like to know how many coins of each type we have. I started with the guess and check table uh, first and I just split it 50 and 50. And when I check the value on that, 50 nickels gives me $2.50, $2.50 and then 50 dimes gives me another $5. So that gave me a total of $7.50. That was too much. And so what I did is I increased the number of nickels and decreased the number of dimes, still making sure that I had 100 coins. And it just happens that on my second guess, I was able to make it work. Okay, last time I had a lot of guesses. This time I only had two. When I checked this one, 75 nickels gives me $3.75 and then 25 dimes gives me $2.50 and when I add those together there's the $6.25. This one can be done with algebra just like the last one. Um, I didn't put it in here but n would represent the number of nickels and d would represent the number of dimes. So if we put our dimes and nickels together we should have 100 coins. This second equation goes with the values. 5 cents for a nickel and 10 cents for a dime. Be really careful with your decimal places. And then the total value has to be $6.25. Just like last time, solve the simpler equation for one of the variables. I solved it for n. Take that expression and substitute it into the second equation in place of n. So I substitute it in there. We get 0 0.05 times 100 minus d plus 0 0.10 times d equals 625. Do all of the distribution. Go ahead and collect like terms. And then we have a little bit of work to do to solve from there. We would subtract five from both sides so that 0 0.05 d equals 1.25. And then we'd have to divide both sides of the equation by 0 0.05 and we would come up with d equals 25 dimes. Once we know that, we know we have 100 coins and 25 of them are dimes, so 100 minus 25, 100 minus 25 will give us 75 nickels. So 25 dimes and 75 nickels, just like we had in the guess and check table. And then I think, I bet I ask you for a statement, like there are this many more dimes than nickels, something like that. Let me see, that would be on screen 10. We want to talk about nickels compared to dimes. There are 50 more nickels than dimes. Does that make good sense? Yeah, there are more nickels than dimes. There are 50 more nickels than dimes. So that's where that came from. Almost home. Here's another combo problem. This one has a little geometry injected into it. And this one, I do think that guess and check is the way to go. The algebra behind the scenes here is fairly involved and so uh, you're not required to have ever seen it before so we don't have to go touch it. No worries there. If that's your thing, if you really like algebra and you've seen a lot of this before and you want to give it a try, feel free to check in with me. I'd be glad to look at your work. All right, so for this one, the length of a rectangle is one more than three times its width. The area of the rectangle needs to be 80 square centimeters. I'd like to know about the perimeter of the rectangle. So I made a little table down here. I'm gonna pick widths, and then I'm gonna make lengths using that one more than three times the width idea. And then I'm gonna check areas. And remember for a rectangle, the area is length times width. So my first choice for width was 10. I like 10. When I make a length for that, three times 10 plus one gave me 31. And when I multiply width by length, I get 310. It was too big. I was hoping for an area of 80, and that didn't work out. 
And so then you can see me chopping things down. Oh yeah, if I check eight, three times eight plus one is 25. Eight by 25 is 200 for the area. Still too big. So I went down to a width of six, got a length of 19 and an area of 114. Still not working out. But then I realized, oh, five. Five will give me a length of 15 plus one is 16 and five times 16 is 80. All right, so now I know my rectangle needs to measure five centimeters by 16 centimeters, and I have to go answer the question. I was supposed to find the perimeter. Perimeter is the measurement all the way around the outside of the rectangle, and so we'll have two sets of five centimeters and two sets of 11 centimeters, and when we add that all up, our perimeter should be 32 centimeters. And I think that one is done. Yeah, what's the perimeter? We have a way to figure it out. Labeled the answer, I think we're good to go. I give you the unit two objectives to look at. Remember, you wanna keep an eye on those. Let's take a quick look. Multiplication principle of counting came from last week working in this unit. Counting principles, that kind of, they kind of go together, those top two things. Basic probabilities come into play. Be able to explain your responses. I like it if you know why you wrote down what you wrote down. Venn diagrams. Okay, so that's about getting organized and how many individuals have this feature, like how many individuals had lizards or fish, things like that. But also be able to do some probabilities with those. Combo problems were in this activity in Desmos. Counter examples were also. Handshake problems are from last week. And then this bottom one, the comprehensive approach to problem solving, that sticks with us all semester. That means, can we solve problems? And do we have a variety of ways to do that? Do we have a more than one way often? So make sure that you keep an eye on that. And if you have stuff that you are not very comfortable with and you want more practice, please let me know. I'd be glad to get that to you. And then a reminder about active study strategies. Putting a check back or a check mark in all of the active study strategies. Completing extra practice problems is definitely active. You have to do it. You have to actually physically and mentally do the work. Playing videos again, pausing them, completing the problems, and then checking your results against the video solutions. That is very active. This one is pretty active. Going over old problems and writing out the details of each step, like off to the side, that's pretty active because you're having to do something. Um, playing the videos again, not terribly active. Looking over problems, just looking them over, not terribly active. Neither is looking over notes. Um, I think you really want to focus on what will I ask you to do to uh, show that you know things on a quiz. And I won't give you a, a quiz question that where I ask you to tell me how great you are at playing videos or looking over notes. So make sure that you're prepped for all of our quizzes in this class are um, your preparations are made up of really active strategies. Okay, armed with all of that, I think this wraps up this particular Desmos activity. Let me know if you have questions. I am right over here willing to help. Have a good one.